welcome to uh, At the Table. My name is Eddie Medina, and uh, thank you for being here. And I'll have you guys introduce yourself around the table. We will start with Susan. <laughs> Give me an intro of yourself and kind of how you got oh, here and okay. what you do. Um, <laughs> my name is Susan Scudder. I am the Associate Youth Pastor here at La Casa. Um, I came here 20 years ago from New Jersey. I was a teacher. I started volunteering here at the church when that girl over there was in the second grade. <laughs> I used to um, volunteer. Hold on, I used to be a professional volunteer, so I volunteered everywhere: the church, American Cancer Society, everywhere. Um, and then I just kept moving with Shelby's grade, and now she's a senior, yeah. so. They officially hired me for, I think it'll be five years in October. Really? Awesome. Yeah. It's been that long already. I think so. Yeah, that's crazy. And so what do you do well, here? What is your, uh, what do what is I, your title? What I mean, mine is everything she else. She does everything. True. <laughs> well, what um, doesn't she do? Exactly. I work alongside Chris, huh? the youth pastor, and we plan trips, and we do Sunday morning lessons, and we teach confirmation for junior high, and... Bible study. Bible studies on Tuesday nights, so we got Sunday mornings, Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, one-on-ones whenever we can with the kids, late night phone calls if the kids need us, if the parents need us. Um, we're constantly doing stuff. Trips, classes, fun, and then all the lovely paperwork in the office, which is fun. You know, there's always paper pushing in every office, so. It's true. Yeah. All right. Introduce. <laughs> I'm Shelby Johnson. <laughs> um, I got a chaparral, and I'll be a senior next year. Awesome. Yeah. How long have you been at La Casa? Second grade? Well, I've or actually longer? been since kindergarten. Cool. But I mean, I feel like my earliest memory would be second grade. So. Awesome. And so, what are your plans for the future? High school <laughs> and beyond. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to finish high school. That's always a good start. There you go. Good, way good to choice. Go. Start, um, with, start with that. I'll go to college, probably in-state, to save money. Cool. And I don't know which of the big three I'll go to yet, but I think I have my heart set on NAU, but I guess we'll see. Cool. Do you know for what? The big three. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll probably go and majoring in political science. Cool. I don't know. Right now, like, law fascinates me, so I guess we'll see where that takes me. Awesome. All right. All right, um, I'm Kate. I just graduated from Pinnacle, and I'm going to Cal Poly in the fall cool. for like two months. <laughs> and what was your major again? I'm an aerospace engineering major, technically. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I know you gave me a little breakdown of that before, and it sounded really cool <laughs> and something I've never heard of before, but it sounds awesome. Um, my daughter, actually, my daughter's 12, and she came home like, like two years ago, and she wanted to be a vet. And so I was like, cool. Well, we do a turkey hunt. And so we took her to that. And my oh. son was six at the time. And he was like, I don't want to do this. And so we did the turkey hunt. And he got all invested. She saw one turkey, and she decided oh. that it wasn't going to be her future. Oh. She couldn't handle it. So about a month later, she came back, and she goes, I want to be an astrophysicist. So, That's a big jump. Wow. That's a that was a huge jump. jump. That's that's a Asked her why, and she's like, well, I want to put people on Mars. I'm like, do you want to go to Mars? And she's like, no, I don't want to go there. I just want to put people there, and I don't have to kill any animals. Perfect. So, Perfect. All right, well, Best of that's how we transitioned into that. So, yeah, she kind of blew my mind, so I, stu I did study for, like, what she had to go to school for, and she wants to go to Harvard and do all that. But So that's cool. You know, she's been pretty focused on that for two years. So Awesome. So what brought you guys to La Casa? I mean, let's we'll start with. Susan's oh, leadership. I, what brought you here? Well, my one and only son, who's now 20, um, I wanted, <laughs> I used to be a Catholic and um, honestly had a little bit of disagreement with the church, but I always wanted my son to make his first communion. Mm -hmm. So I church hopped for about two years and then heard great things about Neil and Amy. Neil and Amy used to be the youth pastors here. And they were all over the valley, they were known, for their amazing youth group. So I thought, all right, well, let's check out La Casa. Sam can make his first communion, and then he'll have this wonderful youth group to look forward to. And that's what brought me here. 
Fantastic. He came kicking and screaming. <laughs> it was actually his idea. He was in the fifth grade when Shelby was in the second. And so I started volunteering as a Sunday school teacher. They put me in second grade. Shelby's class came in. And my son said one of the reasons he didn't like La Casa is because he only saw his teachers once a week and he couldn't make a connection. And then ne the next year he had someone new. So he said, you should follow this class. Mm -hmm. So it was my kid's idea. So that's what I did. I followed them and follow them all the way. They're going to be seniors next that's year. Awesome. I know. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm, uh, this big reason I'm moving up to junior highs to go with Ash. And yeah. I always said I teach them. So Ash, I had her in fifth and sixth. And then I want to do a couple of years with junior high and see where that goes. And then if, you know, Kai will be fifth and sixth in a couple of years, I might go back. And, yeah. But it's good. You develop a relationship. You do. And so you guys are kind of, you know, we're here from, you know, kids. So what do you love about being here now? Um, my favorite part is the friendships that I've made because all of my best friends that I consider my family are here. So, so you've developed a good relationship. And I mean, like, she's been my mom since the second grade, so <laughs> I got pretty lucky with that one. That's <laughs> awesome. So, so what, what, how, how do you see how they, the experience has weighed with you? How, how does that build that relationship? What, what things made you say, wow, I want to be here? I mean, it was definitely like, when I started coming here, I didn't really know anyone who was here. And then like a few of my friends, they kept consistently coming. And then it was them who kept kind of like making me want to keep coming. So like, and then you go on the trips and you get closer with them and you make more friends. So someone's always here. So that just kind of kept bringing me back. They're always kind of pulling you along. And yeah. And we, connecting until with you figure out yourself. We pulled her back. So I have to tell you a little story about oh. Kate. I yeah. told you how I met Shelby. So Kate um, didn't really know her. You went to, through confirmation, though. But that yeah. was before they hired me. So I didn't know her confirmation class. And we were looking for confirmation leaders um, because I always take high schoolers to go with the seventh graders. And Chris kept saying, Kate would be perfect. She's amazing. She's great with kids. She's sweet. Let's, and I'm like, all right, I don't know her, but I'll ask her. So she agreed. I don't think it was easy, though. Like, my memory, of course, is a little shot. <laughs> but I think it was, like, kind of begging you. Yeah. And I think you finally agreed. Yeah, that's definitely what happened. And then one night... This little girl was upset, and another leader brought her to the bathroom, and then I went to see what was going on, and Kate was in there. And so this is when we kind of hit it off, and we stayed in the bathroom at confirmation camp until about 1 yeah. in the morning, talking about <laughs> the show Friends, and phalanges became our thing, <laughs> and Pivot. <laughs> I now have a framed picture of a couch from Pivot, so all you Friends fans out there, from Kate. <laughs> And then I tell her to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone who knows friends will understand that. It's funny. It's not mean. Party <laughs> who doesn't know friends. Then if you don't rough. know friends, it sounds know friends you know, a bit rough. Shut yeah. up, shut up. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of how you guys, you got back into it was that. And what, so what brought you back? Like, what was the big thing that was like, well. So I wasn't planning on being a junior high leader, like, at all. Because I kind of just stopped coming around, like, my sophomore year. Um, because, like, I made it through confirmation, so there was no more requirement. But, like, I still knew a few friends who, like, kept coming. And uh, then Chris texted me, like, randomly one night, like, a week before confirmation camp or something. It was random, it yeah. Was it was, like, 9 o'clock at night, and I just got this text. And he was like, please be a leader. And they were, like, begging me, and I really didn't want to do it. So I talked to one of my friends who was going to be a leader. And then she kind of convinced me to do it because she was, like, she's a year older than me, so she'd already done it before. So then that's why I came back. And then, like, I made more friends on that trip, and it just kept going from there. It's awesome. And then she met Shelby. And then I met Shelby. <laughs> yeah, we met for the first time on that trip. <laughs> and so how long ago was that? Last oh, year? It was, yeah. Last summer. A year ago from June. So, yeah. And so having you guys together probably makes it easier to do even stuff like this. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it easier to kind of connect with, you know, people in the church. But also you guys have each other to connect with, and that probably helps a lot. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. <laughs> um, my daughter does that with... She went to Tuesday Night Bible Study. Uh-huh. And she never really connected a lot with people moving out here. And so she started making a couple of friends. And then all of a sudden it was like, if her friends were going to 1030 service, she would go. But if not, she's like, I don't want to really, let's just go home. Because we were here, you know, we teach 
um, Ignite in the morning. And so now her friends are here. She wanted to go to 10. Well, now going into junior high, she went to Jim Jam because her friends were going. And then she went to Bible study because her friends were going. And then she went to the pool party because her friends were going. And that, that was like a cool thing because I was telling Pastor Chris, I'm like, she's entering seventh grade and she's going to pool parties but it's high all about the pool it's all about yeah. the friends yeah it's all sure. about the friends if the friends go the kids will go yeah and then eventually hopefully they make a relationship with the leaders mm-hmm. and then the leaders help too oh yeah but yeah you got to have a friend because you just do makes it easier to go yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. Be there. makes life easier makes yeah. life easier. right it gives you a little confidence yeah. when you walk into the room yeah you don't want to be yeah. the one that doesn't know anybody I mean, everyone has to start by not knowing someone Oh, yeah. And that's the hardest thing. We've learned that with everything, even when you get to be an adult. Like, we try to get men to do things, and we're like, hey, come out to do this. We don't know anybody. Well, yeah, neither do I. And so <laughs> that's the whole point. Let's get, well, I don't want to be the weird one. I'm like, you got to start somewhere because you're always going to be the, the, the new one if you don't just try to get out there and do it. Yeah. And I come from, like, I'm, I'm an observing type, so I don't get involved right away. Or if I do, I'm, like, behind the scenes. I don't want to be – don't tell people I'm here. Um, <laughs> and now, as he does a podcast. Yeah, oh, yeah. now I get out <laughs> here because like, well, you can talk a lot, so just start talking to people. I'm like, cool. So I, that's that's one thing I liked, even being going to the pool party and seeing like how everyone kind of like was with each other and talking, and then Chris, Susan, Pastor Matt, everyone was kind of there like, talking and, and developing that relationship. So it makes it easier as you go. I, I can see it in seventh grade. You're going to eighth grade ninth grade, you'll want to come to these things so that's an amazing relationship to develop so tell me about some of the activities what what do you guys love about let's go to activities first <laughs> um during the year or during the summer uh give me give me summer right now because that's what we're in okay so summer is like my favorite part because it's where all the trips are <laughs> so <laughs> um as a junior and a senior you can go you can be a leader on confirmation camp Boom. and then a week later when you get back, you get to go on the summer trip, which is, like, the best ever. <laughs> but, um, and then after, like, and in between you have pool parties, Bible studies, like, all the summer stuff. And, of course, you can do it because you don't have homework. And, mm-hmm. like, most people don't have sports to worry about. So it's, like. The obligations are kind of thinned out. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you have all the time in the world to hang out with your friends. Very cool. We'll get back to camp because I want to talk about camp. But so tell me about the year. And then we'll- I want to talk to you about some of the challenges of the year, too. So school year comes. What do you guys have going on? So we have, like, <laughs> Sunday morning um, staff, which happens 724 at least. But now this year they're changing it. So high schoolers and middle schoolers are separated. But this mm-hmm. last year it was 724, and it was both. And that was, like, before church on Sundays. And then Wednesday night for high schoolers, they had, like, Renew, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. I lasted for, like, two hours. They have, like, the junior high winter trip and the high school winter trip in, like, December and January. And uh, they have, like, Bible studies and stuff like that throughout the week. So they still have, like, some random events, but consistent, consistently it's, like, we're new and then 724. Cool. <laughs> so what are some of the challenges? Uh, you know you said scheduling sports. <laughs> what, what, when school comes around, what, what is the biggest challenges to getting and doing some of the activities or even getting to, I don't know, Sunday mornings sometimes are hard? Well, I mean, Sunday mornings are hard because – you want the weekend to sleep because the week's so difficult and you're like, I just need one more day to sleep in. But I mean, when you have best friends, it like pushes you to come see them because a lot of times like we don't go to school together. So it's like, that's like one of the only times throughout the week that I get to see her. That's your check-in with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And then (laughs) other things that would interfere would be like, I know personally I had like so many sport obligations. So like that Mm -hmm. always got in the way of things, but you know, a little side note, she says, Shelby says that about getting up in the morning. So as leaders, we take attendance because if, if you're going to be a junior high leader and you're never here, then obviously oh, yeah. you, you can't be a very good leader. <laughs> so Shelby had perfect attendance. Congratulations. Sweet. And the only time Kate missed is you had a college, a couple colleges you had to go look at. And of yeah. course. She, you know, it's kind of important. You got to yeah. a little bit. Just to, just you to figure out your life, you know. <laughs> yeah. But if it wasn't for the colleges, she would have had perfect yeah. attendance too. So, yeah. Even though it's hard to get up on Sunday morning, you guys did it. It's kind of worth Sunday. it. Yeah. 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 And so yeah, that that probably helps with the communication through the week, or like you have an avenue to like text or talk, but you always keep up with each other and coordinate if you're coming or not. Yeah. Oh, she's yeah. not a texter. Really. 
I no. hate texting. I am <laughs> a fan of like one on one. So like Kate and I, instead of texting, we call each other Perfect. all the time. Okay, consistently. Mm-hmm. Isn't that nice to hear though? Yeah. Because in an age of texting oh, yeah. everybody, I like that they actually communicate with words. Yeah. I love texting. I don't like responding. And people <laughs> will tell you that. Like they'll text me and then I'll see them and they're like, Well you it texts you on Tuesday. I'm like, I know. They're like, You never respond. I'm like, <laughs> I know. I'm not really good at that. <laughs> see, I just forget to respond. Like, I I'll see it. Too. Like, oh, I'll, I'll answer it. later, and then I just forget. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I read it. Oh, wow. That was you just have to be it. honest, though. Because <laughs> when Shelby doesn't respond, it's okay, because we know yeah. she doesn't like to, so yeah. we're not going to hold it against her. Yeah. I'm not a big texter. She like forgets. Yeah, I just forget. Forgets. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, mine's a combination of forgetting, and I'm like, just, just call me. I'm more of a call and t- I'm more of a talk person. So if someone's long windedly texting, I'm like, Hey, <laughs> can I just give you a call or you want to go meet and we could talk? <laughs> the paragraph long text. It's like, really? Well, my favorite one's like, up the phone. are yeah, you mad? Honestly. And I'm like, I sent you five words. Well, they, they seem mad. I'm like, they're just words. They're just words. Like none of them are capitalized. There's no, they, that's so, what I hate about text. Yes. It's like yeah. you can't convey tone over text. Yeah, no and I am emotion. such a sensitive yeah. person where like if someone <laughs> sends a period, I'm like, oh, they're mad at me. I know. So, yeah, it's got to be exclamation yeah. point now. Yeah. yeah. capitals. If you send someone all capital, mate, they're yelling. Oh, they're that's just what, what I do when I'm excited. So I don't know. <laughs> yes, me too. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know. So whenever someone's like, well, you sound mad, I'm like, I said, duh. Like you really <laughs> don't know why you're you know, I just sent Sam a text. Like I said, he just, well, I don't know if I said it, but he just moved out. Like, he started yesterday and he's finished today. So I sent him a text. I said, call me when you get a chance. A couple things I want to talk to you about. Um, or we could just talk over the weekend if you're real busy. And he texts back and he says, is it bad? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I, just, I just want to talk to you. <laughs> but you just don't know when you text someone. Well, no, because you're just yeah. sending words. Yeah. You're just I'm sending like, words. With- I want to talk. Is it serious? It's sad anxiety. Very serious. It gets, it gets weird. It gets weird. That's it. You're smart. Stay away from the texting. And yeah. yeah. Well, really what's kind of, what's interesting is like with um, the regular kids that come, it's kind of um, like consistent. Like none of us really enjoy texting. Like I know our really close friend Claire, she hates texting too. Like, I don't know. Most of the girls in our youth group don't really like texting. So That's good. My, yeah. my daughter got a phone at 12 and she coordinates everything through. Okay, just coming to church is a thing. Are you coming to church? She's texting her friends. Yes. When? Ten minutes. Are you here yet? Yes. Where are you at? And it's, <laughs> Did that today. Yeah, they're texting until they're like seven inches from each other. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you're here. I'm like, wow, that, you really. That's and when they start driving, they wait for each other in the car. <laughs> yes. Or you meet at Dutch Bros beforehand. This or, is true. yeah. We have like the Wednesday night thing before going to Radio. Oh, Dutch like, Bros before, yeah. like an hour beforehand and show up at the same time. Yeah. That's it's never a coincidence. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's the future. That's what we have going on. But I, uh, we're getting, like, I'm, I'm 38, so my guys my age, plus or minus, that's what we're doing, too. Like, a lot of us, our communications become text and social media. And it used to be emails, and I never checked emails. Oh, and so I don't like emails. Text has like taken emails. over emails. And I'm, I'm working at the church has become, like, you talk about paper. It's like, we email, like, someone will email you, and then they'll text you. We just emailed you. I'm like, you just text me too. Like <laughs> they'll s- to they'll it. email you and then they'll say we just text you. We just sent you an email. Yeah. It's like just text. Me this is what this email. is what you look forward to an adult. Like when you become an adult, it's like in an just, office. We email, text, and then we text you to make sure you get the email. It's pretty cool. And you're like three doors away from each other. But Super part exciting. of the pro- part of the yeah. problem is a lot of people don't read their emails, so they send the text to make sure you read the, the email. Why can't they just send the email in, a in text? the text? Because email is more professional. <laughs> or just call. <laughs> right? Just call me. Just call. Like, just call. Hey, I need you here in five. I'll be here in five minutes. It's it's different. So, well, that's it. I walk to other people's offices. I just walk and talk to them. Face that's to what face. I would do. Yeah. See, I don't have an office, so it's usually just me kind of oh, standing yeah, around true. somewhere, randomly in the hallway, <laughs> and yelling at what people need. Like, who needs to talk to me today? And then I just go to everyone's office and be like, "Do you need me?" Because, or I, I'll say, "Oh, I saw you text me." Yeah. So, that's, that's, so there you go. There's your future. That's what Sweet, you can't forward. wait. A lot, a lot of people just getting mad. <laughs> well, I don't know with, with their, their plans, like their career oh, plans. They might true. not even be in an office. Yeah. That's true. That's the dream. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like when Monty and I are working, like we're, our phones are not, like we can't have them on us, they'll break. 
So we throw them like in another room or in a job box or something because we do construction. <laughs> so it's it like, or no, we'll throw it. Yeah, that's the other thing that we would do. So that no, it's nice. not too bad being disconnected for a couple hours. Oh, that's my oh, well, favorite that's part about trip. mm-hmm. church trips. We're not allowed to have our phones. It's like the best week ever. Huh. Well, let's talk about trips. So tell me about camp. Um, Confirmation camp? Yes. As a leader or as a kid? Talk to me about leader first and then let's go to kid. So as a leader... I think it's like such a cool experience because Confirmation Camp is such like a turning point for kids. It's like really the first time they like experience God and like no distractions are there. So like there's like every boundary is down and like it's like the best. And so as a leader, you're a part of that experience and watching the kids experience God and feel God and like seeing God work through them is like the coolest thing ever because you know that he utilized you to help get them to that point. That's a really cool experience. So you get to observe it from the outside and see it. Yes. Especially yeah. since you've already been through it. Yeah. So you kind of, you're anticipating what's coming. Yes. And then you get to see it in, in your eyes, but you also get to see it through them as they're acting it out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and they do play a big role in l- helping the younger ones, like, relax, let them oh, yeah. let their guard down. Because they're seventh graders, they're nervous, they're uptight, but the high schoolers just... They, yep. like, let them know it's okay. Like, when we come yeah. in confident with, like, fake smiles yes. on our face, they're like, okay, it's going to be fun. Like, yeah. it's okay. Yes. This is a welcoming thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, like, especially since we have the opportunity to get to know them and create relationships with them throughout the school year, going on the camp, like, even if they don't know a lot of their peers, they all know us. So they're like, oh, friend, like, I know yes. you. Yeah. Pastor Chris and I were saying something earlier about that. Is like, it's when you kind of first take ownership of your faith. Oh, yes. yes. That's so definitely you're, you're Definitely. Coming into... You go through, like here we have Ignite, or we have like the kids' programs, and you're introducing a lot of stories and some verses and, and video, like you're getting, but a lot, of, a lot of what we're doing is we're getting them ready for the maturity part. And so you guys are taking over that step where you're owning it. You're kind of almost, you're making a choice to want to be here too, because mm-hmm. that's a hard Definitely. age to, if you fight a you know, teenager to come to church, it's the worst thing ever so if they don't want to come then nobody wants to come and it's a different style or generation now because like i grew up in a retirement community where everyone was in their like 70s oh wow (laughs) in a lutheran church and i I was telling chris like our confirmation (laughs) was nothing like what yours is but my mom they she was just it didn't matter. She threw you in the car. Like, you're going to church. I don't care if everyone's in a bad mood, tired. And nowadays, it's like you don't fight. You don't want to fight anyone to be at church and be angry and stuff. So What's the point? Yeah. yeah. Everyone's, my, my mom would just make me. She's like, you're going to sit there and you're going to do church for an hour. And I was like, oh, this is horrible. Um, <laughs> you're never going to have a connect. I feel, as a parent and a leader, the kid is not going to form a relationship with Jesus and have that Holy Spirit move inside of them if they're forced to mm-hmm. sit there and they're all angry because their heart's closed off. Yep. So and you don't have a relationship developed with anyone when you're there. So yeah. if you don't have that, it's it's hard. When it's easy when you have when your kids want to go. Like yeah, it yes. makes me want to go. And if they're having something they're looking forward to, then the family wants to follow. Yes. I think that's a big thing, you know. And then of course like trying to offer things to every like dads, moms, singles college everybody as it's you guys hard. get older it's like it's it's hard to find something that caters to everybody but it's when I mean, everyone wants to go life is easy and getting involved and being active and so i but, think with like the camps especially i know that the way my mom puts it is like you know you get busy and everything so you're like church can wait but then when i come back from a trip mm-hmm. like literally on fire from like jesus and like having like the best friends in the whole world and like like nothing <laughs> can like stop me mm-hmm. like i will go anywhere it like pushes her. She's like, "That's why you go to church. Like, mm-hmm. that's why nothing else matters until like Jesus." You know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Setting just, that priority. Yeah. Yep. And it probably makes your family see it. For sure. And then they want to fo- like gives them a reason. I always think it was amazing watching youth come back from camps, and then being like, "Oh, I want to join." Yeah. Like exactly. I want to be there. I want to have that same kind of relationship that they're having, and. So I, I think that's that's the first part that makes it easy, is wanting to be here. Well, it makes it very easy when the kid understands their relationship with God, because I don't think I understood 
God himself until I felt him at camp. So it's mm-hmm. like, you can tell me anything in the world, but unless I have experience, it doesn't mean anything to me. I think that was like the coolest part because you get back all refreshed. You're like, I understand it now. Like my heart feels it. So now my like mind can like understand it. It's like that pa- you're getting to write a passage into like, oh, yeah. yeah, you're owning your faith. You come back prior- prioritizing God. study, yeah. you know, prayer, God, Bible. And so what else we camp? What what else happens? Let's say from <laughs> it doesn't happen. But but about the participation part, being <laughs> being involved in it. Being let's say being a kid. What did the kids see and feel? And when you went through it, what was it like? It's very terrifying. <laughs> I'll say that it's everything about the camps are surprises. So you're going into everything very blindly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but it's always fun they're never scary surprises but um depends on the person <laughs> that's yeah. great it was scary for me i don't know about you but i was scared confirmation camp you were scared yeah. oh yeah because you like don't have many friends in middle school and you're still trying to figure out who you are and stuff this is true and, like you just don't know what to expect because it's your first like trip but then going back as a leader it's so different because like you've established you are more and you're able to like help the kids because you know exactly what they're feeling like so that's like that's why it works so well having the high schoolers we mm-hmm. know everything yeah. that's coming. So it's yeah. Like... Well, it sounds different coming from you guys than it does from even us because, you know, we're saying it from oh, yeah. 20 years back. You're saying it from, I was just there a couple of years ago. <laughs> right. And this is the thing. Some of the things for me feel like they were yesterday as if it, I was in junior, my junior high was awful. <laughs> I mean, the <laughs> bullying beyond belief. And mm-hmm. I remember it like it was yesterday. But the thing is, no seventh grader is going to believe that. Like, they don't look at oh, an older yeah. adult and be like, she has no clue what she's talking about. But if, it, if a grad or a senior says, I was bullied in high school or junior high, it means well, it they holds more up. weight. Yeah. 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 Well, and it's a different form of bullying, too, than what we had. Like, you guys, you're bullying. It's like, yeah, you're, everything's changed. Everything's yeah. changed. Yeah. The it's, game is different. I think when a parent's talking to a kid, they're like, you wouldn't understand what I'm going through. But if we're talking to them, we're literally only four mm-hmm. years older than them. Yes. So they're like, you actually understand me. No, it's and like, that is such a refreshing feeling when you're talking to someone who has wisdom, but like they literally understand everything you're going through. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I can give you advice about something, but I can't give you the story about how it is right now because you guys are gone through it. <laughs> you guys, you guys are, are in it right now. And like you said, middle school bullying was different. Probably for you, different for me. And then now it was pretty bad, though. Yeah. And there was only 15 kids in my junior high. So Mm. when you're bullied (laughs) and you you stand out because you're the one being bullied in a small school, there's nowhere to hide. No, not at all. Mm -mm. Yeah. And they know where you live. Friend groups. Yeah. So they come to your house. Yeah. Yeah, it was bad. Ours was a country school. Like we were in a small little mining community, and it was like that too. And if you didn't, if you didn't blend in. Which, whichever that meant out there, <laughs> like, because it was a mining community, so it's not like it was like, yeah, you know, we're in North Scottsdale now. It's a little different. Where but was it? It was in Sarita, south of Tucson. It, it really, it was. Don't even it know. Was, it. Nope. We had we had no you. stop signs, no stop lights. <laughs> we were just like one road through, and we had a mine. Everyone worked for the mine, like so that's what we did. And all we had was a bowling alley that was open like three days a week. So that's where everyone went. <laughs> Like, you can only have fun three days a week. Three days a week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it was just that, that was us. But yeah, wow. it, the oh bullying God. was different because you if you stuck out, you stuck out well, big. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And I got moved there in like my in middle school, so I really oh, stuck out. That was part out. of my problem because oh, no. we oh, moved yeah. there in the sixth grade. Yeah. So that was part of the problem because they all knew each other. That's the best time to just stick you in a really awkward situation, isn't it? Middle Studies school. say yeah. never move your kids sixth or seventh grade. So when you have kids, let that be a lesson. Unless you have to absolutely avoid it at all. Costs. Avoid so moving your kid in the middle school. Yeah. yeah. Well, everything. I, so I went from like Tucson, which is a little bigger of a city, to this town. And I was like, this is different. Like everyone kind of vibed a little different. Everyone was really kind of. Well, they people rode dirt go bikes bowling to school. Three days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People rode their dirt bikes experience. at like 13. That's just. A, that's not even. Like, that's just. Different. That is was. not normal. right. No. Yeah. We didn't have a grocery store. Like we had one what? grocery store. We I didn't mean, have a Walmart. We didn't. Have I like feel a like that has Walmart. nothing to do with the generation gap. I feel like that's, that's just. That's no, that just was just a different, different experience. That was just our country life. Like yeah. it was. It was different. Yeah, I don't think anyone can relate to that. No, I don't really think so. No, 
but yeah, the the bullying was weird, and <laughs> I'm glad, we didn't, I'm glad we didn't have social media because that would have been oh, a mess I can't even imagine because it would have been the same fifteen people. We just had a class reunion for my graduating class, which was from the same town, with like fifteen people that went, Party. and I think only like Ooh. sixty graduated. So it's kind oh, of a gosh. lot going on. Well, we got shipped to a different high school, so we didn't. That was it. Went up to eighth grade, and then. Oh. I think by the time we got to eighth grade, we had 19 kids in the class. Oh, my nice. gosh. Big class. Yeah. yeah. We get to know everybody. Yeah. yeah. So how does, I know we said not big on texting, but how does, like, social media and stuff like that affect you guys with day-to-day function and everything like that? It's distracting. Ooh. I have so much to get done, but, I mean... If Instagram pops up, oh, I'm distracted for two hours. Like, easy, like, wham, bam. It's just... It's fun Do you ever look how many board, hours yeah. you're on? No, Screen because time. that scares yeah. me a lot. I did it once, mm-hmm. and I was mortified, so... I have mine going right now. It's depressing. <laughs> the, um, the average male at, from 30 to 40 spends two to three hours on YouTube a day. Why YouTube? That's YouTube so is random. their generation. Because that's, that's, oh, their, that's our generation. Like, that's... Yeah. That's our resource. And also, it's like YouTube got really smart with that on like next videos. So it's like, if I watch this, <laughs> yeah. oh, these other five look really, so I gotta yeah. get back to these other five and these other five. And, yeah. And so mm-hmm. that's just an idea of like, you think about, you know, my age group to, I think uh, it could be even older than that. And younger. Yeah. Sam's um, d- is not that far ahead of them, and his grade, I remember the YouTube mm-hmm. thing, before Instagram came along. Well, the YouTube. Too, yeah, yeah your brother, YouTube. Yeah. same grade. That yeah. social media is what catches that age group more, because there's a lot more um, options, like Instagram and, and Snapchat. I guess all that just kind of flows through and takes up a lot of your time. But it's not any different for adults, except for we just kind of date ourselves at what we use and but we get sucked in really I'm kind of I'm I don't know my phone I looked at the hour usage and I'm just like what was yours mm. you know? uh, no I'm not talking about that. <laughs> no. say it so my I actually do the screen time thing and mine I think was Sunday I was almost four hours and I don't even know why it's honestly not bad compared to what I've heard from other people, though. Mm-hmm. Which is scary that four hours is, like, a low number to me. But I think myself I know. is not... Yeah. I think, like, myself is not a big phone addict as much as a lot of so people. So four yes. hours, you're, like, but four where hours did those still four like, hours go? Where did yeah. those four hours go? When I, and I, if I could break it down, like, an hour of it was music playing. Oh. My oh, that doesn't count. But then the it other, the other, like, I think it was an hour and 45 minutes, two hours was YouTube. <laughs> I don't even know why. I think I just started clicking, and then also I'm like, ah. No. You lose track of time so you quick. Mm-hmm. And then, and then the rest of it's texting or commu- like calling. But yeah, it's most yeah. Minus. that's what most. Minus. But yeah, if people, I don't know how people can be more. Well, but 15 it is. minutes here, 15 minutes mm-hmm. there, and then up. kids lay in bed till. I'm not saying you do, but I do know there's a. A yeah. lot of kids will be in bed till like two, three in the morning. Just but on you the don't call. even realize it happens. I've yeah. done that. I don't. That's you lose track yeah. of that. Time You're like, wait, it's three. It. I'm like, I, it doesn't yes. happen to me often because when I'm in bed, I'm out. But like, <laughs> it happens once or twice, and I'm like, I don't even know how. Like, three a.m. Where did it mm-hmm. was just? Well, it was just eleven. Like, yes. <laughs> so do you guys read? So here's a. Do you read books or do you do e-books? What What's the? School is kind of ruined reading for me. That's depressing. Because, like, I don't mm-hmm. know if you had AR. Yes, I did have I had AR. AR. I'm not that much older than you, Shelby. Well, okay, like, it depends what school. school. I know every school. True. And I was in a different district, so I don't know. I guess we wouldn't... So explain AR in case okay, someone knows. So AR is... Accelerated reading. Accelerated reading, and it's, like, mm-hmm. this thing where they rate books on point value, and you have a certain number of points you have to reach every, I don't know, semester or year. And if you don't read enough, like, you get kind of punished, and you have to take these tests at the end of each book and if you don't pass them you don't get the points yeah and I was so I used to be so bad at test taking and so was my brother so we both failed all the tests and it was like, like but you just, read the books yeah and I I enjoyed reading the books and at the end of elementary school when we stopped it I didn't enjoy reading anymore because like it stressed me out way too much so, like I couldn't enjoy the book because <laughs> I was thinking like is this going to be a test question yes and now the same thing because it's like I don't know. I still have tests on books. Like I don't do AR mm-hmm. anymore. But so the only books I read are for school. So you don't have like a social reading. No. Oh. 
How about you? I'm proud to say I do read occasionally. <laughs> um, Who's your favorite author? Who's my, oh, boy, you're getting... Do you have one? Um, probably Ralph Ellison. Favorite book, The Invisible Man. So. <gasps> <laughs> I actually read that one for school. I really liked that one. I read that one for school, too. Um, no, most of my books are, like, for school purposes, or, like, my teachers give me ideas, and I, like, spread off of that. But AR actually made me like reading more. Really? Is it because it forced you in? A little bit, yeah. Because, like, I'm actually opposite of you. I'm, like, a really good test taker, so, like, it wouldn't stress me out at all. I'd be like, oh, I get to know all of this, and, like, would, like, be really oh, proud of the fact that I was reading it. And so, like, yeah, your benefit was proven through. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then also it was fun because, like, in high school, my, like, AP classes would have us to, like, Socratic seminars. We'd sit around a table and, like, make points based off the book and what social statement they're making. And I was, like, good at that. So, like, I liked doing stuff like that. So, like, now I'm still, like, reading those books so I can, like, do it to myself or something or be like, oh, I understand the theme. <laughs> See, for me, it just, like, takes away from, like, the value of the book. For mm -hmm. me, I feel like what I'm reading is, like, I personally get out something different than what you're going to get out. So it's, like, when That's these tests like generalize it. knowledge that you should be getting out, I don't know. I just get overwhelmed too easily to enjoy the whole thing. Just test. to read. Yeah. See, I, I wanna... just like mystery novels. It's all <laughs> about the crime drama. That's that's it. And then there's no hidden agenda or special meaning. I'm just tr trying See, to I figure like out special meaning. I love special meaning. I love like symbolism. It's just ugh. I'm here for the political Tests themes. Can't do it. I love political. <laughs> yeah. Themes. See, I think that's the problem because whenever in school you had to read things like that, it was for a test. Like in college, yeah. there's so much reading, and yeah, it was you get all to kind for of a pick, test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's they took when you the can pick fun your own. out of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I liked about my school is that we didn't have a whole... We had tests occasionally, but they were, like, mainly based off discussion that we had. Oh, I love that. So, like, you'd I be able to, like, do that. learn off of other people's way. Like, oh, you took it like this, I took it like this. I love that. It's like... See, we have very few of those. We do... If you if you don't have a test, you 110% will have an essay for it. And that's I like even... I essays. See, okay, I, I'd rather do an essay... I like English. I like it. I, like I love English. English. I'd rather English do an fine. essay than tests, but it's, like... I want to read a book to read a book. I don't want to read a and book. And talk about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Well, it's, it, we, it's a battle, and, and it, it gets hard because my, my son's eight, and he's like, go read. And he's like, oh, how long? <laughs> yeah, it's like a chore now because yeah. Yeah, it's like well, associated with school. He sets his Alexa for, like I say, go read for 20 minutes. He's like, okay, Alexa, set timer for 20 minutes. And he will read. It beeps. He's like, I'm done. He can be in the middle of a sentence. What? But <laughs> I hate that. It's, it's kind of like... I uh, have to finish the paragraph. It's yeah, kind of yeah. like... I have to finish, like, the full book right then. Yeah, his distraction is, like, get back to Xbox or get back to this or uh, that. Or, and, then, um, and my daughter's also the same way. It's like, ah. Oh. So it's like finding something that she really is into. So I said she, like, she wants to do the astrophysics thing. So it's like finding her little books that work with that and yeah, finding yeah. things that are written... To that, she, she tried Harry Potter and she got really into it. And then, those were good books. So I think the depth of how thick they were, like she got to the last couple and she's like, This is daunting, like, this is never gonna end. So, I think she just kind of burned out by Aww. that. But she and she'll go back. But it's we even set goals like, if you finish Harry Potter, we'll take Universal, you get to go to the Harry Potter world. My parents never did that. I really never wish that. And she's like, I'm okay, I don't need to go. She's like, I don't know. What? Really go uh, can you adopt me? I know. <laughs> can I? Can you get to finish the series? No. <laughs> I read all done. of them. I know. I know. We're all going. I'll take a test to prove it. Let's but go to Universal. I think the generation is kind of like, they're just, they just don't want to read, but it's because you have so much other stuff to do. I also feel like it's just a big middle school thing to not want to read because you're trying so hard to like establish like mm -hmm. who you are and like make a friend group because it's just such an awkward age. So, like You don't want to spend your time sitting in a room alone reading. Cause, like, I that's think it's a personality goal. thing, yeah. too, though, because Sam was a huge reader, still is, just loves to read and read and read and read and learn and learn and learn. And he still does a lot of other stuff, too. He's still on yep. social media. He still hangs out with his friends. He still plays music. He still plays video games. Like, mm -hmm. he does. Depends. It's like a personality thing. It is, it's adopting the ability to schedule a time to read, too. I've also learned that, like, as I got older, I like, have to schedule well, like, if you want to read if bad you enough, wanna you'll find exactly. time to read. Well, yeah. so it's like, like, you'll turn off YouTube and you'll read. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't call out on that. No, but that's, that's what it is. Direct has, attack. That's what it has to be. Yeah. yeah. And so, the like, it's almost like having that time frame as, like, I've got, well, and so I hated to read until I was a sophomore in high school. And there was a lot of, I was, I'm dyslexic, so that was a big one. And then um, yep. I had... ADHD in high school and instead of like trying to fix it by balancing they gave me glasses 
But I didn't have a vision problem. So there's pictures of me, like, up until my sophomore year of me wearing glasses. I don't wear glasses. Wow. But they, 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 this is wow. weird. Wow. And so... That's um, awful. Until they figured out how to... Di- di- and I learned how to control, like, my schedule, essentially. But it was a sophomore teacher that didn't, like, didn't like me much. And he was like, you're just not really good at reading. And I was like, I'm going to get really good at reading. And so I started like finding books and going to the library and just getting my own books and reading. And I was like, basically just to prove them wrong. I never would see them again after that year. I, I got through <laughs> yeah. junior, senior year. I, I started reading more and I read now, but a lot, I tell Stacy this all the time. I like, I just didn't spite this one guy. You know, it's funny how teachers can do that though. Like they can light a fire under you oh. and just, and the student will just prove them wrong. And his negative, like his Which negative, so bad. No, it, it really, works. it fired, it, and I, yeah, kind of works. And I set, like, book goals, like I do. I set book goals, and I set, like, read this many books in a year, or um, read this much time a day, and so I do, I try, like, try to schedule, and I wake up at, like, a ridiculous hour in the morning, so you got to be quiet in my house, because there's kids trying to sleep, Stacy, there's dogs sleeping. <laughs> you interrupt one, and the whole house blows up and becomes loud, so reading usually happens at like three thirty or four in the morning when you're going oh to sleep. Oh my gosh! Like oh. Yeah, right. When you're going to bed. <laughs> but that's like my been, and so also like with when I read the like do Bible or read Bible studies or devotionals, it's usually really early in the morning because there's no distraction, and I can I can't be loud anyway. So so I better go to the gym at four in the morning. So those two things usually happen. Oh my gosh! So no. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about hobbies and activities. What are some of the things you guys... I'm going to start oh, after I, you. Yeah. <laughs> so, for 10 <laughs> years, or more than 10 years, I was a competitive gymnast. Okay. But as of last week, I'm no longer a competitive gymnast. So you caught me at a weird time. We're in a transition. <laughs> yes, my Please. program ended. So, oh. no longer in that. But for a while, like a long time, I was like constant practices which is actually why my sophomore year I didn't come to church as much so I like lost some of those relationships but it's okay so what is the plan now well well, I'm I'm a senior now so all my junior year I caught up so I'm good now I'm set I don't need to do anything anymore no no, junior year I've regained all those friendships because I prioritized a little better than I did sophomore year so example A awesome (laughs) um I mean Oh, yeah. Art. Art's one of them. Sweet. <laughs> Definitely art. <laughs> that sums me up as a person, I think. That's it. Kate made this for our summer trip. I did do that. And how long did it take you? A very long amount of time. No, <laughs> you didn't have a long time to make it, so it didn't no. take you that long. Well, mm-hmm. no. Can, I mean, in your life, maybe, but, like, for a non-artist, it you whip this together pretty fast. Oh. Well, um probably five days working like 18 hours each day yeah wow, that's awesome, see bro. yeah but it would take someone yeah. else five months yeah <laughs> it looked amazing i noticed it on the stage oh coming thank back. You. it's awesome yeah. thank you very I cool very much tried you need to do more and put them she up actually the what did you win well you had you had a picture a painting in <laughs> the Should museum I give you my qualifications? The, yes i've it. had <laughs> get the resume out i yeah. have a website just personal, like, you know, plug right here. Um, hey, <laughs> use it. Check me out. I have Instagram, too. Um, but, so, I've had a piece in the Phoenix Art Museum. I've won an award at a district art show, and I've been in, like, five, no, seven art shows now, I think. Awesome. But, and you were second place in the big Dutch Bros contest, Oh, yeah, right? they had a Dutch Bros sticker contest, and I got second place in that out of out hundreds of, of designs. She should have gotten first, in my opinion. Mine, too, oh, but, but okay. you know. Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> we're a little biased. A little is, bit. I liked her sticker better. I, I did, too. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. That's awesome. So, art's a big thing. Art is a very big thing. Reading. Yep. Reading's big. Mm-hmm. Cool. And what, anything else? Any... Activities. I activity. used to do volleyball, but I got injured too much, and I had to stop about my sophomore year of high school. <laughs> you break your back three times, you kind of need to stop. You <laughs> broke your back a, three I broke times? my back three times. <laughs> In volleyball? Yep. Wow. Yep. So my mom didn't let me do football. 
She's like, it's too dangerous. You're going to get hurt. <laughs> so I did wrestling because she's like, well, I can't get hurt that bad. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. And there was no idea what wrestling. I don't think she had an idea what it really was. So I brought my neck wrestling, like my senior year. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. And um, so I taught her. <laughs> Football would have been safer. But yeah. I have two very non-athletic kids, and they, they understand that, and they know it. And um, <laughs> and. Burn. My my son tried to do football and he spent more time like complimenting the other players and man that kid's really good and I'm like he's a team <laughs> and he just was like that was so he does karate and that's his and he's really good and he excels at that but which is a sport in its own yeah it is oh yeah yeah, yeah. but competitively like when he tried to do team sports it just didn't work and my daughter did volleyball he reminds me because you said that and her first game they're like put her in and so they put her in it's six sixth grade and they do middle school sixth grade at her school and the first serve she got hit in the face <laughs> yeah, and um, uh. and she quit like she stayed <laughs> and she quit no, she, she stayed done. for the season but she's like only use me if you have to like this Aww. is not and so I was okay with it but it was it, it was okay because I was like man they'd be really athletic because I played sports a lot in school and, but they found their own kind of balance and she did competitive cheer and it was really emotional. And yeah. yeah and it's up your alley. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know what it like it was that much. It's a little it was a lot. Yeah. And they got second yeah. place in the state tournament here, which didn't really seem to matter because only first place like mattered for that. Oh yeah. So it yeah. was it was really weird. So <laughs> it's that the activities I, I kinda came to the conclusion that they don't have to do a ton of sports. I wanna do something. They don't. But they're into Just music. Something. They like to sing. Um, my son likes to entertain a crowd of people. That's his big thing. He likes to be in front of people, so we let him do that. But no, it's it's it was weird to see how they just didn't respond well to team sports, and got it. She got it. And then we went to Lacoste. We did that family fiesta. And we decided to play kickball, and then she got in the face with the kickball. <laughs> and I feel like it sounds like really me. well with this girl. <laughs> yeah. So she was like, I'm, I, I don't need to play sports. Like, this is not my thing. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. So she's got through two gym jams without getting injured, so we're doing pretty oh, good. Oh, there you go. Oh, she's she's thriving now. Yeah. Yeah. Next week, yeah, she's going to yeah. She broke her ankle walking on a trampoline three years ago. Walking on it. Okay. Had to have her, it was a big just deal. New so. form of talent. Yeah, That's just, really yeah. impressive. So we're like, just, just let don't. her study. She's a good studier. <laughs> be a so. okay, here, enjoy your books. <laughs> so tell me about the leaders. Um, high school or junior high? Well, tell me about your leader, Susan. First. Oh, no. Which that sounds yeah. weird. You're She's the, the best. The leader, the- Susan. Tell me about oh. <laughs> her um, and embarrass her really good. Embarrass her. I can't embarrass her when I'm complimenting her. She's there's like, not a lot to embarrass. I don't think there's anything That's embarrassing. True. I mean, there's a couple things involving Miss Vicky. But <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. No, but we're not going to dive into that. Um, she's a good one. Definitely. She's a good she's one. A great one. She, she has a lot of experience, so she's mm-hmm. very she she offers a lot of wisdom to us, which is great because. We've needed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> High school's rough, yeah. and it's always mm-hmm. nice to have. So it's like there's this like there's this tunnel that everyone goes through, right? And it's really nice when we're at the beginning of it, looking into this like big black hole, and she's on the other side of Aww. it, being like, "I literally pinky promise you that there is the light at the end of the tunnel." As like cliche as that sounds, mm-hmm. it's well, I mean, there's no other way to say it. It's just like yeah. she can promise us that like life sucks, but like it's also amazing. Which is like, and it will get better. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's it's really nice to hear from her, like her experiences, even though like they're very different from ours because she grew up in like a smaller town, and she's just you know different. But mm-hmm. she's seen it before. She's, yeah, she's seen been everything. Through it, yeah, and I've been through some stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and she's come out pretty well in my opinion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and I care. I really, she really does really a lot. Care. She makes a big effort to like keep connecting with the kids and like making sure we stay connected with each other. Like her and one of the other leaders took us and our friend Claire to like go visit one of our friends who's in college yeah. now, like throughout the school year. Cause and they spent the day with us, just yeah. like reconnecting with this girl, mm-hmm. literally the best. And we text all the time, even though we don't like texting. <laughs> <laughs> Group chat. Group chat. <laughs> the investment. She makes a strong investment. In yeah, she really does. Yeah, it's yeah. her and like. 
I, I can't attest a lot of the guy leaders because I've grown like closer with a lot of the girl ones, mm-hmm. but the girl leaders especially like make big investments in us and we like you don't you become like you have such a great relationship with them they no longer feel like adults to you like Mm -hmm. there's that there's the the sense of like respect between you two but like you feel comfortable and like you feel like a friend yeah peers motivate yeah like and that's that's a big thing but also like wisdom comes from people seeing it for a long time and getting getting through some of that stuff even if it's different worlds or different things and uh, like I've always, I've always said you got to have someone mentoring you, teaching you, or oh, yeah. like even when you're older, and th- when you see people stop looking at other people to teach them, that's when they kind of stop developing. Yeah. And so it's like constantly learning, constantly looking for advice from people and asking the questions. And that doesn't change. Like if you can hold and on to that, always, it's good. yeah. And there's always curveballs where it's like I never thought this was I'd be here at this point in my life. I never thought this was going to happen to me. I never like you have all these plans, and then it's like curveball, 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 and then you're like, all right, I got to learn to roll with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as hard as some of the stuff is, that's what you want to try to mentor to the kids. It's mm-hmm. going to be. Okay. Yeah, they're just like our backbones, and it's really nice. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Like Miss Vicky, who's like her best <laughs> friend. She like so because I'm in like AP Englishes and everything. I've had like boatloads of summer reading the past two years. I know. The past two years, she's looked at my list and picked one of them, and then she'll read it with me, and then we'll like talk about it after. Like it's just like the amount they care is like mm-hmm. they off the charts. Like they don't need to care that much. Mm-hmm. I think another good thing about, like, the youth program is how many, like, different kinds of leaders there are yes. and, like, oh, different yes. ages with different experiences. So, like, yes. no matter how many curveballs you're thrown, there's a very good chance that at least That's, one of them is the yeah. same <laughs> Yeah. So, like... Yeah, different personalities, so different very eclectic ages. Ones. Yeah. Different walks, yeah. different things that you've been through. Yeah, exactly. And boys and girls are different. And I actually use some of the high school leaders who are close to Sam's age because... Like, I go backwards. It's like, okay, I want to be the best mom I can be, mm-hmm. but you're closer to his age, so tell me if this is okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so they can help guide me to be a better mom, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, for sure. For I was... your practice children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, Sam was the practice, and he yeah. got the good and the bad. You guys pretty <laughs> much the get good. the good. Mm-hmm. good. Well, it's always easier to, like, deal with someone else's kids, too. Like, I've we wondered. see... She doesn't have to ground us. But yeah, this is, to go home I'm, I'm just saying, we just have to ground you, us. Like. It depends on where your heart is, though. Mm-hmm. Because I couldn't care for these girls anymore if they were mine. Like, when yeah. they hurt, I hurt. When they're hurting, I still stay up at night worried about them and thinking about them and wondering what I could do to help them, mm-hmm. just as I would with Sam. So I think it's a matter of how open your heart is to these girls or to any of them. Well, I know there's certain things that, like, I can't even like deal with my kids. I'm like, so they talk to like their godparents, or like you know leaders or become part. But it's like there's some things that like they my daughter doesn't want to talk to me about. She just gets mad, and so she does better talking to like her godfather. Yeah, and, that's very common. I am yeah. fortunate. Sam and I have very close relate. He pretty much tells me stuff sometimes i'm like okay la 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 too much information <laughs> no I, was only, I was only a child and my mom it was just me and my mom so it was like we did talk a lot but i also never like wanted to talk to anyone else because i was an only child so i was like i did really good by myself so when i got dumped into like adulthood and got dumped into like working i had a really hard time communicating with people because i thought like people just know what i'm saying like, like, <laughs> you just like, assume people so, like i was like you should learn from osmosis it just kept bouncing off and you should know what i'm doing so it was really weird to, like, I never had that good communication outside of, like, myself and my mom. And it was, so it, it's good that my daughter's learning to talk to other people. And, and, oh, it's very good to communicate. Yeah. And she loved the Bible Sometimes study. just getting great. it out, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. You don't necessarily even want an answer or a oh, solution. you don't need advice all the you time. Did, no, you just want to get it out. People don't always need to out. solve your problems. Yeah. So you just, exactly. just got to get them off of your chest. Yes. And then you can breathe, finally. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's probably different boys and girls, too. See, I don't feel like it has to be. I think some of that is society telling well, you that. Well, sure, I mean, yeah. It but just I, depends I, the problem. Like, mm-hmm. I know guys, like, 
typically tend to deal with, like, problems with, like, anger, where, like, I just cry. <laughs> so, like, I'm not going to expect my brother to cry every time, like, someone slams him in, like, or, like, gets, like, bumped in the hallway or he, like, fails a test. Like, he's going to go punch a hole in the wall, and I'm going to, like, <laughs> cry. <laughs> so, very different. But, but yeah, it, I think you said it, it's a society thing. I mean, I, you said it perfectly, too, is, like, I think being a male, you, you're not really told you can vent yourself so it is like do my, my wrestling coach had a really good thing he used to say don't fight inanimate objects because you'll lose so don't go punch the wall because you'll break your hand don't <laughs> kick the chair because you'll break your foot um <laughs> and he was really good at like it's try, so true try talking like and he was actually he was really interested being in a very alpha sport where you're throwing people on the ground and you're wrestling like he was very good at like talk about like, try to talk about it so you don't get on the mat and hurt the guy next to you. Yeah. Or you don't take out your... But it's hard to teach boys to, like, just talk and let it out. And it, believe me, it's when they get to my age and older, we are st- we still struggle with it because we don't want to show vulnerability and we don't want to show that we're not strong or tough or whatever you want to call it. And that's a really... I, I look forward to talking to some of the kids growing up about just opening up a little bit and not yeah. burdening <laughs> stuff like you're saying like just go punch the wall it'll get better no you're just gonna have a hurt hand and your feelings gonna hurt too <laughs> and you gotta fix the wall and then you might have to buy stuff to fix the wall believe me so yeah, yeah, pock- punching it's a mess oh, fix a lot of walls from boys doing that and the boys are still <laughs> mad like well is he doing any better if he can't even punch the wall no he's still mad about something <laughs> then and now we have a hole so. Yeah, so. I never understood that punching the wall thing. Oh, my brother threw a remote at the wall one time when it's he v- lost a video game. It's so v- big oh hole, yeah. lost a video game. Venting emotion. I think that you're not. Tired. But a wall, like you're gonna lose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it's exactly what they were yeah, tell us. But, like, yeah. I can see throwing can, a pillow, or uh, I mean, I can kind of get it. Cause I, like, I'm. Diff- I've definitely felt the need to like. Punch a pillow. Like, I've punched a pillow before. Yeah, but a pillow yeah. is like, all right, I'm going to hit this pillow 19 yeah. times. My hand's not going to hurt. I, I know I'm going to you know. and it's going to break my hand. Like, See, like, that's when, like, you're at, like, the lowest point. You're like, yeah. you know, I really just got it. Like, just, I'm not really down. down. I think I can hit as Might well. as well. But, like, when you have the option. It's, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's a really cool thing about, like, our youth group is, like, on summer trip or, like, confirmation camp, we have these, like, worship nights where you're just, like, literally told, like, you're given no other option but to be vulnerable. And, like, everybody takes it. And so, like, everyone's in tears and, like, everyone just opens up. And, like, whether or not, like, you're actually in tears, like, your heart's open. Mm -hmm. And, like, you will talk to people. And it's a matter of, like, we've created, like, that community to where even, like, the most, like, closed-off guys, like, you, like, look over and they're just, like, sobbing. Mm -hmm. And even if you're not, like, feeling it as much, like, I'm definitely different and I'm more, like, closed off in my emotions. Like, so in my middle school experience, I wasn't, like, one of those people sobbing, but, like, my friends were, so, like, I still opened up so that they could sob to yeah. me. So, mm-hmm. like, you're at least moved in some way. So if you're not moved yourself, you're, like, moved for them. And then, like, there's that sense of, like, this is a safe environment to open up if I need to in the that future. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I always say that when you, like, sit in church, and if worship's really cool and people are, like, getting into it, everyone kind of gets into it. Oh, yes. And then, but if everyone's just kind of, like, arms crossed and, like, Waiting. That's why yeah. the high school leaders have to be there during the junior high trips because the junior highs were all like, yeah. oh, I'm not going to raise my so arms. Yeah. But I know that one of the mornings during worship, um, <laughs> me and this girl named Claire, which is one of our other best friends, her and I like <laughs> went up to the front of the kids <laughs> and like started jumping, and then they all started jumping. Mm-hmm. But if we stood in the back, they weren't all going to jump. They were just going to look at us super weird like, what are you doing? So I don't know. Yes. Just, yeah. We that have to set cool. the example. I remember that. Feed I know. Energy, that was so much fun. But, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, and that's, that's the energy you want to see happen. That's yeah. like a fun. It's like you feed off each other. You do. You do. And I think that, that goes for anything as you go through it, like Sunday mornings or if everyone goes to a pool party and just stands awkwardly with their arms crossed, it's not a fun pool. But if someone, it's always that first person to jump in. Or get, get pushed in. Or get, yeah. <laughs> or get pushed in. Usually, they yeah. get pushed in, yeah. and then everyone goes in. Yeah, it was funny, because like, we were at the pool party uh, last week, and I was talking to Gary Randall, who was at his house, and he goes, there wasn't as many boys there. And yeah. he's like, it's a lot calmer without all the boys like trying to like, jump across the pool. It was a lot of girls that night for some reason. Really? Yeah. Yeah, 
It was like it two. Was, well, no, there was about five. There was about five. Boys. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. yeah. The rest were girls. It was, I don't know. What was? It was weird. It was. For, for Randall's, too, because they usually pull in a lot of kids. Yeah. Well, and they were, like, totally happy because they were, like, it was calm. It was a really calm. Cause Poor Nikki Randall. She, she gets nervous. I get it. I get it. Because if you had someone like me... I, when at that age, I was the one that was trying to jump across the pool. Like, I can make it, guys. Uh, I couldn't. <laughs> I, but physically, I, couldn't. <laughs> I physically couldn't, but my it's ego like my ego always said I could. It's oh, like, go, do it. Yeah. And then I wouldn't do it. The male ego. Uh, well, my son Something inherited special. it, so it's like, it's, it's something different. It's Now he has that ego. But it was it was interesting to see how kind of calm and relaxed. and But it took everyone to kind of get in the pool, too things get started. It always takes that first person to jump in. Yeah. Let's mm-hmm. hope the one at my house is calm. I would really appreciate that one. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to send out a memo? <laughs> Everyone has to be calm. I think it's the last pool party. It is the last pool Shelby's. party. Mm-hmm. And the last girls' Bible study is at Grace's. So I hope you girls can come. So well, we if it's at Grace's, then I'll have to come. <laughs> Grace is sure a grad. Oh, yeah. Grace, Grace is the best. Grace is one of the singers for the youth band. Grace also started my Tuesday night Bible study. So you were in seventh yes, grade. Grace started in the, in the eighth, eighth grade. grade. I don't think she's missed any in the past two years. She she went through a little period sophomore year. So awkward for some reason. We yeah. lose sophomore girls, but they the come back. Sophomore, sophomore year, year is right? the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're just like trying out new things. So I lost <laughs> her for sophomore year, but eighth grade, ninth grade, junior year, and senior year, never missed a Tuesday night. And then the off-campus ones would either be at Shelby's or at Grace's. So it's kind of fitting that the last one is at Grace's. That's She's awesome. gone. That's so sweet. I'll probably be there. We'll probably go. Yeah. Next year, I'm hoping Shelby will take Grace's spot and not miss I one. will be because I won't have gymnastics. Yes. So. Well, yeah, open schedule. Your schedule's all And her mom. Yes. Oh, oh my mom loves to too, host. So we'll have the off-campus yes. at Shelby's <laughs> house. And hopefully you can come visit. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not leaving till September, so hopefully we can go visit her in yeah. California. Yes. <laughs> that's awesome. That's, that's a better option. I that's like California. <laughs> so what is, I'll let you lead this, what is oh, no. the future, what is your future goal for La Casa <sighs> Youth and volunteers and all that? And middle school room. And middle school room. Well... The four rooms that way are being all turned down to make one big room like this one. It won't be this big, but it'll be for the junior hires. We just came up with the theme, um, Refuge. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the junior hires will learn how Christ can be their refuge and their protector. (laughs) That wasn't me. Got it. We saved it. We saved it. Um, And it's a place where they can come because junior high, like we said, is such an awkward age. And they can Mm -hmm. come and be supported and encouraged and make some bonding friendships before they come to 724, which is the high school where they learn how to build their foundation on the rock. So junior high is going to be like, come learn how God can protect you and comfort you in in the storms. And then, so that's what I'm now hoping it just keeps growing and we can reach out to more and more youth so they know, like I said before, junior hires, I have a passion for because mine was so rough mm. and lonely and sad. No. <laughs> and I don't ever want any no, kid really to feel like, I just don't want any kid to feel like there's no place to go. Even it's, if it's only me. Like it's that hope that hang in there, you will have friends someday. Mm-hmm. You will. Like, people grow up out of their snottiness and their meanness and their bulliness. And they mature, and you'll have friends. I have so many friends now. It's like, (laughs) I have another friend who calls them. She's like, I was having a party once, and she said, how many of your people are going to be there? And I'm like, my people? Like, I have people (laughs) now. (laughs) You have people. People are But it's, you can go from having literally zero friends Mm -hmm. to having good lifelong friends. No. And I want every kid to know that. Because <laughs> friendships, how important are girl friends? Mm-hmm. Very important. Very important. <laughs> so important. They just help you. <laughs> like, they do. Yeah. They do. Well, I'll tell you, when I moved out here, I knew nobody. Like, I would, my Stacy knew everybody. So I was like, we're moving to Scottsdale. Oh, cool. Like, okay. you'll, you'll, and she used to say, oh, you'll meet people. And I didn't know anybody. But it was a lot of it was just me. Like, I just didn't want to get out there and, and get to, but I, 
I've learned in the last couple of years being in the church and meeting people, most everyone I know is from the church, is that like life is a lot easier to live when, when you, have, you have people living it with you. Yes. And when you have good times and bad times with people. And I've got to hang out with a lot of, you know, cool people at the church and, you know, facilitate a lot of friendships and people I even work with. It's it's great. And that's that's really important. I think you guys are on the right track because you guys have pulled each other back and together and you know, I will in. say though, it's also important to be able to do things by yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh mm -hmm. yes. Like when I moved from Jersey, I literally sold everything that would not fit into my car and moved out here and I only had an acquaintance. I had my father's neighbor's daughter who was a contact out here. And I did it all by myself. You're gonna go to California. Yep. She has friends. She has roommates. I made the friends though. Yeah, when I was in. touring she the did. school. Yeah. yeah. So you're, but it's like something you can do alone. You can have that self confidence of doing something it alone, knowing you're gonna meet people. It was really mm -hmm. weird, and you're like, gonna have more friendships. Yeah. So when I toured the school a few months ago, um, there was like some sort of event for like admitted students, and like your parents weren't allowed to be there. So they literally threw us into like the quad, which is basically just a pit. <laughs> like they literally threw us into a pit together with like no adult supervision and like a few like upperclassmen. None of us knew anyone, and like we all were in there and we're all like really awkward. <laughs> so like the first like five minutes, Don't I'm walking in. I'm like walking in. I'm like I don't want to go to school here. I don't know anybody. I'm like, is it too late to like transfer schools? <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be here. And then like within like five minutes, they like had us doing like this like weird game. We have to find someone, but the the same birthday as you or something, and I met this one girl named Parker, who's now one of my two roommates, and, like, we found another person, like, from there, and now I'm, like, I have some, like, really close friends that I, like, met one time, and that's making me so excited to go, but, like, I didn't know them before that. Like, you weren't allowed to pull your phone out or anything. So, and like, you're going to feel that way next, like, when yeah, you, you get to do that. Hopefully. It's like, terrifying. It's something you're going to do alone, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, after making those friends, I'm, like, feeling super confident about going to school because, like, I made those friends in, like, two hours, and, like, I still talk to them. Mm -hmm. So, like, feeling pretty good about myself right now. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. I'll be set. Hopefully. Shelby knows some of those feelings from high school. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. No. I, yeah. like, lost all of my friends at the beginning of my junior year, so that was just that was a fun. really fun time. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay because I met this one. So and her other church friends became stronger. Oh yeah, stronger bond. And like oh, sure. honestly, like I've never fit in where I've gone to school because I'm just like so different than the people at my school. So it's really nice to come here and like have all my best friends here because I just relate to them way more than I relate to the kids at my school. We're in the right spot to have friends too. Oh yeah, like, this yeah. is the right spot to do it. And it's a very loving environment. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'll know when people care about you and are invested and want the best. You so, like I tell people that. At, you know, any age. Yeah. Find the people who care about you the most because it doesn't get any easier when you get older because you still kind of have the same competition. You still have the same, like you're trying to fit into things. And I always tell people, like, if you have a size 10 foot, you can't fit in a size 5 shoe. So don't try. <laughs> like, fit where you belong and don't try to adapt to everyone else's stuff. And that's stuff that we deal with at any age. And that's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. I mean, everyone goes through that all yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Happened to me the same time it happened to you. <laughs> yeah. well, this is doing good. Well, I, this We're is awesome. Well. I'm glad we did this. Um, we talked for over an hour, which is oh. cool. Oh, did we? Wow. <laughs> we covered a lot of things. What yeah. time is it? It's Ooh, almost time four. It's time so for us to go. Are you so I want to say thank you, so you guys. Long. Farewell. And say bye to the camera. <laughs> bye. 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 <laughs>